I would like you to join me as we tour the beautiful, well-managed tree farm of O.M. and Carolyn Beckton, Alabama's 2011 Tree Farm Family of the Year. This is a well-managed property, very beautiful, very productive. It has a lot of unique features and a great historical background. Join me as we tour this outstanding property. Well, I was raised uh, on a farm working the land, and that was one thing that I always wanted to do was own some land. My wife and I started buying land in 1965 was the first land we bought. And matter of fact, if it hadn't been for her being willing to uh, contribute her entire teaching salary toward the first purchase, I wouldn't have been able to have financed it. So she was instrumental in buying what land we bought and, and helping pay for it. Well, my primary objective is growing and selling timber. Commercial forestry is what I've got. And my secondary objective would be the wildlife habitat enhancement to provide a place for me and my son and grandkids to, to hunt now and into the future. Well, as far as my forest is made up of, of about uh, 1,100 acres with uh, about 200 acres of it in hardwood type and uh, balance in pine. And uh, the pine, most of it is in uh, even age stands. I'm not uh, opposed to clear cutting and planting. Uh, if, uh, if you don't have the seed so it's there, uh, then you ain't got no choice but clear cutting and planting. Most of the stands that I have now uh, land that I bought that was cut over heavy when I bought it, and the only way I could put it in production was to clear cut it and spray it and plant it. Some people are of the opinion that timberland is something that you cut timber once every 10 years or so and, and you don't do nothing in between, you know, and you just cut some timber and then walk off and leave it and come back 10 years later and try to cut some more. But I manage my timberland as it's a crop and I just believe you ought to make every acre you got produce the maximum that it can produce for either wildlife or timber or, you know, I don't believe in setting something aside and not doing nothing with it. Even in the uh, SMZs, which a lot of people uh, look at SMZ as a blue line area that you paint a line around and stay out of and don't do nothing to, but I try to, try to do improvement cuttings in it. And, uh, primarily to improve the mass bearing trees for game. I'm known in this area as being a fire bug. Uh, I burn real often. And that gives you, you can see better as far as marking your timber. And your crew cutting the timber can see how to cut the timber a lot better. Uh, and it improves the wildlife habitat. You have a lot more legumes and herbaceous stuff growing that uh, deer like to eat and feed for quail and rabbits and turkeys and such. Well, yeah, we have more game now than did to start with. I mean, the uh, the land that I bought from American Can, they had clear-cutted and planted most of it and hadn't done nothing with it, you know, since they planted it. And uh, when I started, I started burning and thinning and that improved the habitat for game considerably particular deer and rabbit and quail and turkey too to open it up to. Oh, and you're saying this was kind of a quarry right here. Uh, yeah, this was uh, what we call a white rock pit. Uh, you, they came in and sawed slabs off with a cross-cut saw that had the handle off of one end of it and they let a slab about six foot wide fall into the water and then they'd take a a saw and cut it up into blocks about 6 by 12 or 8 by 14 or something like that and made chimneys out of it. They would take some of the white rock and grind it up and mix it with water and use that as a uh, mortar mix to stick the uh, blocks together. And they would stay up a lot longer than you would imagine because I've seen uh, 
houses that have been rotted down for years and years with old white rock chimneys still standing. Well, I've seen those chimneys and I wonder how they came about. And it's hard to believe that they could just slab it off and cut it into pieces mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and use it that way. They had to cut it up in the water, keep it from busting when it fell and then laid it out in the sun, let it dry for I don't know how long, weeks or months before they made a chimney out of it because it had to get dry to get hard. Well, I started out, you know, uh, with landowner tours. Uh, I've had three landowner tours, you know, for going through and looking at what I've done and talking about, you know, the different practices and uh, uh, putting in plots in different age timber stands and going over the volume and value and what it grew per acre per year and to impress upon people that you can make money growing timber. Uh, and I started several years ago with the classroom in the forest. And I think we've had the fifth grade in for the, from schools in South in the county for three years for the classroom in the forest. And I've had uh, FFA and 4-H forest judging teams uh, to come down. I'd help them with composting pacing and tree identification and tree measurement and yeah, I could sell what land we got and we could travel all over the world, you know, uh, but that doesn't appeal to me, you know, so uh, buying land to hold it and then sell it and make a lot of, get a big pile of money for it, it would never have been my objective. You know, if I could have been the chief of the U.S. Forest Service and never owned an acre of land, I wouldn't have felt successful. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed your visit to this wonderful tree farm of O.M. and Carolyn Beckton, the site of Alabama's 2011 Tree Farm Family of the Year, who've done a wonderful job of managing this property for wood, water, wildlife, and recreation.